Hey yo guys, what's up and welcome back to Two Toe Tags Metal Reviews and taking our final review of Crown of Thorns by The Crown. So we've been listening to the album for an entire week as we normally do with these reviews. And I gotta say, I had a pretty good time listening to this album. Like, I'm already kind of a fan of this band. Like, I'm not too, too into them. But as I mentioned in our first impression, Cobra Speed Venom, I think, is a great album. I love that album. It came out in 2018. We reviewed Royal Destroyer in 2021. I gave that one a 6, which is a pretty decent score. Not the greatest, but still good. And I will say that this album, I feel, falls kind of in between those two. I don't, I don't quite think I like it as much as uh, Cobra Speed Venom, but I, I definitely liked it more than Royal Destroyer. So I'm going to start just kind of with the songs that were kind of on the bottom of my my list, right? And there's no really there's no songs I really thought were bad at all, but these songs were like the bottom tier for me. And it's track six and seven. Track six is The Night Is Now. Um, the best part about this song for me was that it intros with like a kind of a drum solo. It's not like a big, fancy, extravagant drum solo, but it's a drum solo. And I thought that was pretty cool, but the rest of the song didn't really do much for me. It's fine. It's there. It's whatever. God King, which is the following track, number seven. Uh, again, also at the beginning, uh, the drum fill that happens at the intro, I fucking love it. And it was one of those ones where I would play the song and it would play the drum fill and I would just start it again, just to hear it again. And I would just start it, start, play it a few times. Like, that's such a juicy fill, like such, so good. And there's lots of that on this album. This one just stands out a little bit. He also does it again at the end of the song. He plays the same drum fill and maybe slight, slight modifications to it, but really cool stuff. But other than that, this is another song that kind of just comes and goes for me. I was really looking for something to, uh, you know, say something about this song or something that would catch my attention, and it really just didn't. After those two songs, though, the album picks up for me, okay? Um, I shouldn't say after those two songs, so that makes it sound like they're the beginning. Those are towards the end of the album. It's a 10-track album. Those are six and seven. So let's start at the beginning. Track number one, I Hunt With The Devil. I think it's a good song. Decent opener. I think they could have possibly chose a better opener for the album, something a little, with a little bit more impact and punch. There's nothing wrong with this. I just maybe would have shuffled the tracks around a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, the highlight for this song for me was the solo, but overall the song is just a lot more attractive to my ears. Church Burners next. This one is one of those ones that just has blistering double bass, yeah. and you can't go wrong with that. To match the double bass, the guy's just alternate picking his brains off. And that's another thing you hear on this album from time to time. And it just makes you go, holy shit, that's endurance, that's power, that's stamina. That's awesome. That alone should have been the album, album opener. Like, it would have been yeah. way better. Exactly. You, I could have flipped those two first two tracks, and it would have been a little bit more palatable as, yeah, as the beginning of the album. Moving on from that, we have a stretch which I thought was amazing. Um, Martyrian. Gone to Hell and Howling at the Warfield, I, all three of those songs were just awesome. Martyrian has such great riffs, infectious riffs, catchy riffs. Um, I really love some of that stuff. It also has a real thrashy vibe to it, but also some power metal energy in there. Um, just a really catchy, melodic nature to it. Really good stuff. Gone to Hell, the intro on this song really heavy on the bass but it's got that really good guitar riff backing it up um it's a lot lower tempo but still goes hard mm -hmm. and i like that it just, they kind of change up the pace with that one it's kind of maybe their mid album breather as we like to call it uh, which i think most albums if not all albums need a song like this i think they did a good job here with just bringing the tempo down and letting um letting it ride on a, on a bit of a lower kind of mood funny you mentioned that because i don't know if you saw this maybe not the riff that happens at the one minute mark of Gone to Hell low key kind of reminds me of the riff they do at like the 40 seconds mark of Broken Beaten Scarred uh, by Metallica. By Metallica, yeah, you know what? It's not, you know what? There's a there's a two or three riffs on this album that I would thought were like semi Metallica ish. I just thought it was funny that I noticed that, and last week you noticed that about Agitator reminding you of All Nightmare Long. Yeah. That and Broken Beaten Scarred from the same album. So yeah, I exactly. Thought that was a funny coincidence. That is a funny coincidence. Um, another thing Gone to Hell has is some like whisper vocals near the end. Yeah. And they have that um, in that song. They actually have it in the next song too, Howling at the Warfield, which is probably honestly my top track. Howling at the Warfield is so good. Um, just the blast beats that start when this song kicks off. I'm like, holy fuck, this is the juiciest stuff. 
Um, the more I heard the whisper vocals, the more I'm thinking it's kind of like in the same way that Danny Filth would do it. Yes, it's a I lot agree. Like Danny Filth. I agree, and I thought that too. It's got a it's got a cradle of filth type of vibe to it, and I just like the fact that they did it, that they did it. Yeah. If I had to complain though, at the fact that they do it on two different songs and those songs are back to back, mm. I don't know about that. I mean, I'm, like, I'm being spread out. I'm being nitpicky about that, but. Yeah, it's just like if I was the one making this album and I was like gonna put those creative ideas in there, I wouldn't put them so close together. Yeah. On a 10 track album, why do it on tracks four and five? I guess kind of in general, it seems like you think this album should kind of shuffle the tracks around a little bit. Yeah, that's what I meant. Like, like if, overall. Like, yeah, overall, um, if I had to do something with this album to kind of make it better, I would definitely shuffle some tracks around. Um, so a couple, couple more tracks I want to mention before I pass the floor and see what TV Fish thinks. The Agitator, I already mentioned it in the first impressions. It's still a highlight on this album. Just that alternate picking, super fast, like speed metal, basically. Um, just super entertaining, awesome song. Short but sweet. It's, all, it's less than two minutes long, but it gets the job done. And finally, um, I'm going to skip uh, Where Nightmares Belong. I think it's a fine track. It's just not one of my super highlights. But The Storm That Comes, the outro track. I think this is a fantastic outro. I really like the intro of it. I like how the song builds. I like how it uh, transitions between section and different sections. And it kind of almost feels like an epic in a way. Yeah. It's not. That's, that's the idea. It kind of tells that story to it. It's not like the longest song ever, but it's upwards of like six, seven ish minutes. 657. It's just so it's under seven minutes. It's basically seven minutes long. And yeah. I really like the fact that they just did that at all. You know, yeah. they, they decided to do that kind of song for their album Closer. I feel like not only is that an effective way to close the album, but I like that they, they went that route. Because a lot of bands will do that. They'll have their big epic longer song than at the, the rest yeah. at the end. So I like that they did that, and I like that they you know added even more contour to the album that way by doing that. Yeah, and honestly, the uh, other than the song just overall being good, uh, the solos on the song are just fantastic. And I just really love the solo sections. And the solos on this album overall are really good. Um, but that song, as far as solos go, specifically stands out to me. So, lots of highlights for me. Um, yeah, I, I had a good time. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to bring up Church Burner again. That was probably my top track. I love how they have the intro and then they pause before mm -hmm. they come in with the crazy kick and all that stuff. And I thought that was awesome. The song was so good, it made me skip I Hunt With The Devil. Because that song... <laughs> I'll just get to it. It's just, yeah, because that, that song, honestly, for me, was just kind of whatever. Yeah. And the fact that it was whatever and the song right after is insane, it made me think, why do I even want to start with this track when... You know what's next. I know the next track after is just, like, ten times better. Mm -hmm. So I think Church Burner would have been way better as an opening track just overall. Like, just imagine the album starting that way. I agree. And with that pause and you're like, oh, my God, what am I in for? Yeah. So... It, it kind of just a, affected the song before just by being that good, which yeah. I think is very funny. Um, Martyrian, I also really enjoy. That's another one of my top tracks. They do this really cool modulation near the end where they go up a step and then they go back down for the chorus out, which I think is really cool. You don't really see death metal bands like this do things like that. Mm -hmm. Modulations and or key changes like that. So I thought that was really, really cool. Um, and also the guitar riff that goes throughout the song in the background gets some focus during the verses when you know other things get quiet. I love that riff, the alternate picking that it's got. Um, and then I also kind of listen closely. I'm like, yeah, that riff is always there. It's just more visible when everything else is a bit quieter during the verses. So I thought that was a really, really cool detail. Um, I mentioned basically everything about uh, Gone to Hell, that riff, and, and I really like the uh, whisper vocals there. Um, also, Where Nightmares Belong, love the drum intro to that one. Yeah. And the riff right after that kind of reminds me of one of the parts from Birthday Death Day by Death Clock. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you heard that. Maybe. I, you know, if I didn't, showed you like a... Uh, catch it. I would, yeah, if you, you, yeah. Yeah, you'd see the comparison when I showed you. Um, now, I really liked that uh, whisper vocal, but I do feel like the vocals are actually kind of one of the weaker aspects of this album. Because I mentioned that last week too. Very stagnant. I yeah. feel like there's not really much variety. And, and by variety, I don't mean the guy's got to do cleans, the guy's got to do this and that. No. Just something else. So, for example... The whisper helps. The whisper is an example of something yeah. different. Like, whoa, he does this cool whisper. Yeah. Where I'd like to see some, some maybe some high screams here, some low screams there. Yeah. A bit more contour with how he's sounding with his voice instead of it basically being the exact same thing for every song. 
Yeah. And I feel like there could have been more variety there and it would have made um, the songs more dynamic on a vocal level. I have that problem with a lot of death metal bands, to be honest. The singers just ride the same type of cadence the whole time mm -hmm. and don't really have enough variation. This, this vocalist at least did something different, which yeah. I was really pleased about. And even then, it's, it's not like he sounds bad. He still sounds yeah. good. It's just I wish there was more variety that way. Yeah. Um, but, I, you know, I do think that I do like aspects of the pacing of this album. I was happy with that. I do like that they had this epic, you know, longer track at the end. I just kind of found that um, some tracks were just like, there, there were a few that really stood out as great. There were some that were like good, and then there were some that just kind of came and went. Mm -hmm. But overall, it, like you, for me, it was an enjoyable week with this album, and I did like it. Um, I did mention last week, I know this is, this is not actually considered as part of a review, but mm -hmm. I did mention that Mind Collapse, one of the bonus tracks, was really good. They're honestly all good. All three bonus tracks are killer, like, honestly. I, like I love them all. You but they're not part of the review. They're, they're not part of the review, but you could have taken some of the tracks from the actual album that kind of were just whatever, replaced them with these bonus tracks, and it would have been so big for this album. I, I feel like I it would agree. have been so much better. I agree, and I'm not sure why they made them bonus tracks or what about them classifies them as bonus tracks and not... I mean, yeah. they're there. Like, like yeah, just make, like, I would have been fine with a 13-track album. Honestly? Like, it yeah. would have been a bit on the long side, perhaps, but... I feel like it would have been worth it for how good they are. Yeah, so, like, I, I had no problems with that. You make them part of the album, you reorganize the tracks based on that, and then yeah. you go 13-track album, and you just added three bangers. Yeah. You know? The bonus tracks are really good. I would not sleep on them. So, but yeah, there is definitely some cool stuff on this record. That being said, let's get to rating it. So what do you give it? So with all that said, and yeah, like I said, we take the bonus tracks out, so we can't factor those in, even though they would score quite highly yeah. <laughs> if, if we were including them. Uh, I want to mention just one more thing about the vocals. There's actually a female vocal at the right. end of yep. When Nightmare right. Belongs, yep. which is yep. just at the very end, she sings like one small verse. It's a really soft-spoken, very calm kind of female vo voice, but just another example of at least them trying to make things a little bit different, mm -hmm. right? So on this album, there's 10 tracks. There's five songs I think are great. Um, three songs I think are really good, and then two that are just fine. Overall, super strong album, enjoyed it a lot. One of my favorite things is that pretty much every song starts with either a memorable guitar lick or a memorable drum lick. And it's like, and everything, and none of it sounds the same. There's, these guys are so creative in their craft and such skilled musicians that they could just play so many different things and it doesn't feel like you're just hearing the same things over and over again like a lot of, like a lot of other bands. Mm -hmm. uh, this album is excellent against my toe tag. Very nice. As for myself, it was an enjoyable album and there were multiple songs that stood out. I did kind of feel though that there was a comparable overall experience to the last record, which I did enjoy and I did score well. Seven for you, yeah. It was a seven for, for Royal Destroyer. And it kind of felt like in some similar aspects, well, there's some, there's a few collection of standout tracks here and then some that are just kind of like good and then some that are just kind of like whatever. But as our scoring system determined, this album is going to match the last album at a seven. Unfortunate. But that's a fair score. Seven from TV Fish and a toe tag for me. But you guys, let us know what you guys think of Crown of Thorns after it's been out for a week. And let us know how you would compare it to the last album or even Cobra Speed Venom if you like that one as much as I did. Let us know in the comments down below. Subscribe if you guys are new to the channel. I'm Vile Self. I'm TV Fish. We'll see you guys in the next one.